Hey everyone, welcome back. Dev Spider here again. I know it's been a while, so we're gonna jump right into Night of the Dead. They have a brand new update out with a brand new map, new vehicles, new animals, new recipes, new uh, leveling path, and progression in the game. So if you've been looking for a new zombie type killer game like Seven Days to Die, The Infected, that's got base building, crafting, this is the game for you. Um, it is multiplayer, so multiplayer can get kind of rough depending on how many people you have in there as far as lag issues go. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is going to be a full tutorial series. So we'll cut through a lot of the nonsense like driving around for long periods of time and all that. We'll just cut that out. I'll show you on the map how to get to where we're going and what locations we're at, how to find those locations. Um, there's really no spoilers, I feel like, for me to give out. Uh, so just follow along if you need help and we'll get there. And that, like I said, this can be day zero. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is just a load screen. Some things to check as soon as you open the game. I advise turning autosave off and the reason for that is you'll be in a fight, you'll be driving, doing something important and all of a sudden autosave kicks off, it'll freeze your game for a few seconds and that can cause you to die or cause all kinds of issues. So to do that, like I said, you'll come into settings, you can adjust your all your other settings like your aim, sensitivity and so for that we'll go to UI gameplay and then right here game autosave. When I reinstalled this game on my new PC that was already enabled so I turned that off. If you want to put it in the Steam cloud you can enable that here too. I don't care to back this game up to the cloud. I'll just grab the file off my computer if I need it to move it somewhere else. You can disable camera shake. I know I've had some people in the infected that didn't like camera shake. They wanted to turn it off because it makes them sick. So that's also located here. And then of course all your, like I said your other basic settings. We'll leave those alone. Audio. I went ahead and adjusted mine a little bit, so hopefully it's not too bad in game. If it is, I'll do the best I can in the recording software where when I edit to adjust it so that my voice isn't too overpowering or the game sounds aren't too loud. Because it, it gets kind of crazy once you get the traps and the horror nights coming in. Uh, so if it's too bad, just let me know in the comments and I'll adjust it. We'll get it right probably around episode 2, episode 3. Uh, but it shouldn't be bad. I did a test video already on my test playthrough where I played up to day 35. So I think it's about right, so just let me know. Uh, from there, if you make any changes in any of these, like your controls, which we'll have to go over that um, once we get to the uh, the vehicles, because when I installed the game, the controls for the vehicle were not enabled, so if a certain button will not work for you, come into here and check your control settings, make sure it's enabled. It's just like most of your other games, you click on the box, hit the button you want. Um, again, so anything you change in here, like if you change your graphics to try to make it easier on your PC or harder, or you wanted to get more frames, like mine set for 240. Uh, yeah, you just come here, make a change, and then you hit save. Uh, since we didn't change anything, we'll just hit back. And that's just your game settings. So you can change the actual gameplay settings once you start your load. So we'll do start game. Um, this is my main character. You can have multiple characters as you see here. And that character will have its levels and everything else. So if you log into a game, you're missing your stuff, log back out and try a different character if you've got multiples. Because that's probably the one you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and do this. You can come into here. We can design our character if we want to. They've got tattoos and all kinds of things for their face. Um, I'm not going to do all that because I want to get to playing. So we're just going to leave it as it is with the basic. Uh, you can go from male and female. Um, and I guess we can try to design one really fast. I know some people really enjoy this part of it. Uh, so face. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Something more like that maybe. And change the hairstyles so we've got like long hair being a little slow here <laughs> and we've got that kind of hair it's probably the closest to mine Let's see we got a page two Let's see what else we got but yeah it's really slow is it the generator I guess is just taking its sweet time yeah we're gonna go with the other one so we'll go with this one it's closer to my own hairstyle Eyebrows, we'll leave those alone. Eyes, I don't feel like messing with. Nose, I'm not going to mess with it. Mouth. Uh, let's see. Okay, it, it changes it slightly, but it's not a lot. Okay, we can change the jaw if we wanted to. We can add a mustache. Uh, let's see if we can put a beard on it. Try to get the character close. <laughs> we can go for the old uh, Amish beard. You get the light cut. You can spin holding the mouse down, left mouse button. Go for a light goatee. I guess that's supposed to be an underbeard. We'll just go with this one. See, so we have to add a mustache, I guess, to get a full beard. <laughs> okay, that looks that's a little too much compared to what the beard gives you. I don't like that. 
I guess something like that's about as close as we're gonna get. Where was Harrigan? Can we change the hair color or is that on the next screen? So do we want any tattoos? Like, So we've got facial scars. We've got tribal stuff. I guess this would be fun in multiplayer if you wanted to be able to look at somebody and tell who they are. Um, we're not going to be a clown. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty generic, uh, typical thing for tattoos. Uh, how do I not do tattoos? I don't want one. I don't care for them. I do not want freckles. There you go. Thank you. All right, so let's just go to next. You won't see your character at the time anyways once you have gear on, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so from here you can choose your occupation. Now, I've never actually selected one. I just started playing. So I guess if you do that, it gives you traits in a certain areas and negative points elsewhere. So let's see. Unemployed, diligent, common person. Okay. Let's see, so high-grade equipment drop rate is up. Completion speed is up. For civil servant unemployed no traits angler gives you fishing increased researcher gain xp and critical chance i kind of like that willpower's movement speed and stamina region that's pretty good too and then it changes our stats down here at the bottom so if you hover over these it tells you what they do so vitality is attack stamina usage down all right cost less i guess you th it would be a better way to describe it dodge stamina is reduced uh damage up jump power for strength uh, I think I'm just going to go unemployed. I just like to do it my way. And then you can adjust it in the game. There, we'll go over that once we get to that point. Uh, they've got forwarder, car thief, soldier, hunter. And they all give you specific bonuses you want. So you go through that, choose what you want. We're not going to go through them all here. Maybe I'll do a different video for that. Uh, like I said, this is going to be day zero going into day one. All right, so here you've got positive traits. You just Oh, we can select traits to go over there. Okay, so we've got available points. It's 20. See, hit point recovery from items up, two hearts, stamina regeneration, up creative, demolish speed. Ooh, I want demolish speed up. I hate taking, it takes forever to taking stuff apart. Low voice, I don't care if zombies here, maybe we're going to kill them because it's going to level us up. Jump powered, I don't care about it. City friendly. Damage to trees and boulders and ore. Yeah, we'll take that. Ranged weapon damage up. Wait, uh, d -d 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 -d. low weight, jump back, not up. Hyper, whatever. Range weapon damage up, uh, thick skin damage taken down. We'll take that. Sure, I make mistakes. I fall sometimes. Uh, good posture, attack and dodge stamina usage is reduced. I do a lot of melee fighting, so that could be good. Good wits, parry rate is up from the alley. Completion speed, I don't care about that. Damage to zombies is up. That's nice. I do like movement speed, but we'll see. Big bones damage up. That probably that damage up probably applies to everything: trees, boulders, structures, and zombies. See, attack speed up, that'd be nice. Man, there's a lot of stuff. Materials returned after demolishing. It's increased. Uh, that would be great, but we, eventually we won't need that. Critical chance is up, that sounds good. I do like XP up. High grade equipment drop rate. Well, eventually we'll have maxed out equipment, so we don't really need that. Uh, let's go with critical chance up. IQ 150 XP up would be nice for getting started. Attack speed, do we want attack speed? I think we're going to go with fast hand. No, I mean uh, big bones damage up. We'll do that. Available point is negative one. I don't know if it's going to let us create that. Character name. Well, let's go with good old Death Spider. And see if it'll let us create. With a negative one, we might not be able to do it. We might adjust something else. Put a sharp nails. Might get rid of I'm sure with the negative one, we don't want that. So let's do that. We'll find us a negative four. Demolishing. Evasion rate. Attack speed. Parry movement left-handed oh it's parrying i don't parry i don't use a shield uh stamina regen up that could come in handy still stomach and eh, we could use those two those will come in handy all right so let's go ahead and create eight all right so we've got our character made so we're gonna do single player as i said there is the multiplayer option um if anybody wants me to join their game and play multiplayer one day maybe do a live stream of it just let me know in the comments uh, i'll get back to you because I, I do like this game it's a ton of fun so you can see on this one we're on day 36 I've been playing this one a lot. I did all the testing stuff. All right, so we're gonna start a new game. So we're gonna down here and hit new game. All right, so once you come to this screen, this red meter right here, or blood, whatever it's supposed to be, the higher it gets, the harder it is. So that's based on changing your settings here. If you wanna change these settings, you can just click these buttons and it'll adjust them. Obviously, peaceful is the easiest mode. 
Legends the hardest as far as the preset ones go. And then you can customize it. We're gonna change ours a little bit. We're not gonna increase days. You can make your days longer. You can make your days shorter. You can adjust everything you can imagine about the game in this screen. Uh, some of the stuff you can't come back and change and some of it you can. At least on my last save game, I couldn't get to the details to have to change because I'd already been playing. So I'm getting a little bit long-winded here, so <laughs> sorry about that. We'll get to the game in just a second, I promise. Uh, this video might be a little longer than typical. Alright, so I, no wave would mean that you don't get hordes every night. We're not doing that. I'm fighting. Everybody knows I love to fight. Activate building forbidden area. That pretty much you can build on stuff you're not supposed to. Don't care about that. I want my zombies respawning. I do want to activate, and you'll see this change as we do certain things. So I want my natural objects to re respawn. Synthetic objects to respawn, yes. And you see how this is going up in difficulty. Now this is really important and some people don't. Some people won't leave it on. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, if you want to enjoy the game, do uh, go ahead and disable this. No generator breakdown. Because by end game, that's gonna be pretty much your entire day in game is fixing stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do no research lost upon dying. Uh, drop items on exit. I don't want that on. That would be useful in multiplayer if you just have like if I came to play with somebody You might want to turn that on so I can drop everything But I mean I could just throw it on the ground too. It's not a big deal uh, from there here Obviously if you were playing with your friends you might want to turn no team kill on because you will hit them and they will die <laughs> Been there done that um, you can turn the ending off uh, you, you can leave that on too and just not end the game and just keep playing Now here you can adjust your PvE mode and then if we come over to custom um, That's when you can unlock your details tab right here is where you uh, just the time for day. We're gonna play this on just basic normal settings just so you can kind of see what it's gonna be like which it took all my settings away. <laughs> Alright so like I said natural objects, synthetic objects, no generator breakdown and no research lost upon dying. That gives us a you know we're about mid midway the difficulty. If you want to go up the legend and stuff I advise you do not start above normal if you have not played before. Normal is a good starting point. If you find that too difficult like I said come back into here and adjust these settings. Uh, you can do that before you start and load every game. Same thing if you're running a multiplayer server or something. You can, as long as you log in, you go ahead first. You can go ahead and adjust everything before you open the server. With that, we're ready. So let's go ahead and start game. It's going to take a second, so I'll cut this part out. All right, everyone. So we're finally in the game. Like I said, it, it takes I don't know 30 seconds to a minute for it to load. Sometimes longer, depending on the size of your base, especially if you build in a city. Uh, we're going to build somewhere different this time. Uh, I'll show you a good place to build if you're brand new and starting, and then I can show you my base on the other save. And a good way to get your defenses started if you just want to get a good feel for the game. And now I'm going to talk fast or semi-fast while we do this because we're on a time limit. So let's go ahead and go over this. I'll try to do some editing to make it a little bit more friendly in the game so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you look in the top right of your screen, you'll see it says that we are currently on a normal setting. We are on day 0, hour 14. So when that hour gets to 24, the skull is going to be flashing red. The meter around it is going to fill up and turn red while the skull turns red. Once it hits 2400 hours... The, fir the first wave's coming, and then it's going to happen every single day, as long as you have waves turned on. And uh, so by then, you want to upgrade your base, improve your base, and be back at your base before the wave hits. Otherwise, you're, once you get to later waves, you're probably not going to survive. Even the first day or two on normal is, it can be kind of rough if you don't know what you're doing. Um, below that, you see it says survival note to press M to check your map, and then it gives you the reward, which is a piece of iron. Um, you can follow this if you want to. You'll do most of it as you go. It's not important in any way. You'll get plenty of materials. You don't really need anything from that because you're going to get those and gather those as we proceed. Um, usually you start in about the same spot. This is the same place I started in my other save. So I don't know if there's a seed or something based on what difficulty you select. I used to, you'd spawn in two or three different places. All right, so we're going to press M to see the map. M is in mic. So the map, this is all you get is where you're standing. You'll slowly expand it and see more and more as you go to that area, which is nice. You know, it's like the fog of war. Uh, you can zoom in with your mouse wheel and zoom out with the mouse wheel. Um, if you look here, this is an important thing that a lot of people don't cover in their tutorials. If you look at the top, you've got grid coordinates. So like 162, 163, 64, 165. And on the left side, you've got 46, 45. So it's like your longitude, latitude. These are important. We'll go over that once we get the research table built because it's going to help you find your books. So if, somebody, if you're watching somebody else's video and they say, hey, this book's at this coordinate or something, uh, that's what you're looking for is that. So say we wanted to mark it though on the map, you can zoom in, get your select the exact spot you want, and then left click, and you'll put a marker down. And then if we move at the top of the very top of the screen, very center, you'll see there's a compass, and you can see the number one, and that's where you just place that marker. So you know to head that way if that's where you want to go. This thing behind us is nothing. It just kind of marks where you spawn in. All right, so we need to get to moving because like I said, it's day zero, hour 14. So we don't get a full day today, so we need to get as much done as we can. So now it needs us to make a knife. So to make a knife, you'll hit tab if you want to make it. And once you hit tab, this is your crafting menu. This is where you equip your 
items and everything else that you need. So here's your gear. Here's your costume. Used to, they had a lot more costumes in the game. I haven't found any yet, so I think they removed them. Uh, like I said, we're on the beta branch, so we've got all the new stuff. Um, here's where your armor goes. We'll take the costume off and just wear the armor so that the costume hides the armor. And I think the armor looks better, so we're going to wear that. Um, here's your bags. You can upgrade these as we go. You can upgrade your armor and weapons. At the top here on the left, that's to sort your items. So if we put that here and then we sort sorts it now this is an energy bar it'll give us hit points and energy next to that's just a piece of iron that we started with so over here you can build some throwing knives you can build knives a regular knife which we need so we're going to click on that hit craft and you'll see it produced a knife we got the reward of rope iron came from the first reward of opening the weapon so we took the knife left clicked it dragged it down to the hot bar and put it on one so we're going to hit tab to leave that screen. Uh, you can probably hit escape too. Uh, I prefer just hitting tab again. Now it wants us to destroy a bush. So we can press 1 to equip our knife. You can see it down there. And we'll go up to this like little tree. It'll work. We'll cut it down. And it gives us vine and leaves. Here's a, there's, I think this one's going to count as a bush. Oh no, we, that one did. So we need to get a small stone. These are small stones. So we're going to press F as in Foxtrot to take that. Now it wants us to press tab and make a woodcutter's axe. So we'll come up here, click on that again. Uh, at the bottom, it tells you the required materials. So if it's grayed out like this torch, it tells us that we're what we need. So we have the branch, but we don't have cloth or gas. So we'll click on the woodcutter's X and go ahead and craft that. So we can just follow the tutorial for now, but in a little bit, you'll see where it's not going to help us. All right, so we've got the woodcutter's X. Now it wants us to destroy trees to obtain log, and then we'll get resin as a reward. All right, so cutting trees, this is important. So this is a tree, obviously. You've got to hit it a couple times. Now, once you upgrade your skills, your stats, and your harvesting tools and find better ones, you can actually cut these trees down in one hit. Same thing with the rocks, so don't think that it's going to be this slow the whole time. All right, so to swing your axe, just aim at it. You'll see it highlight. You can also destroy bushes with your axe, but it's a little bit slower than the knife. Uh, you'll get seeds, vines, logs, resin, bird eggs, fruit from trees and bushes. So keep those, you're gonna need them. Just build chests to store it. And like I said, left click it. So you, from right there, we hit it. But if you're too close, you can't hit it because obviously you're hitting it with your arms. So the game's <laughs> involves some accuracy and aiming. All right, so then it'll fall down, we cut it. If you watch the right side below the survival note, it tells you what you got from it. So now it wants us to make a pickaxe. Oh, too close again. I'm used to Killing these in one swing, so I'm going to get used to not having my stats now. Alright, so we're going to press tab. We're going to make us a pickaxe. So you see it's grayed out, even though it wants us to make it, because we need small stone. So we're going to pick one of these small stones on the ground. We're going to grab two. I don't think we need two, but we will just to be safe. And then we'll hit craft. There's our pickaxe. We'll put it on three. Press three to swap to it. You can press three again, or whatever number of the item you have, and it'll put it away. You run faster if your hands are empty, or if you have smaller weapons in them. So if you have, say, a spear, you're going to run really slow. And if you have a knife, you're going to run much faster. And there we go. We destroyed the boulder. They gave us stone, limestone, and small stone. Make sure you save your limestone. You're going to need that later. And your stone. It's very important. All right, so now it wants to destroy a paper box to obtain research data. So this is a paper box. They are all over the roads and in houses. So we're going to destroy this. All right, so we got uh, a couple pieces of research data. We can destroy this barrel too if we want to. It'll give us, depending on what kind of barrel it is, possibly some crude oil, some gas, and iron, or a piece of iron. So like right there, we got crude oil and piece of iron. All right, now it wants us to build a foundation. So to get to your build menu, you're going to press B, as in Bravo. Um, over here, you have tabs to go through that have different things in them. They also have multi-tabs under those. So yeah, the, the game is pretty intense. There's lots and lots of things to build. Uh, you can get pretty uh, in-depth with it. Uh, you have multiple foundations. You can adjust our heights. So here you need vine and a log. So we're going to press build. I guess we can just build a tent base here for the first night. Maybe the first two nights. We'll see. All right, so we'll just... All right, so you can mouse build to spin it and get it the way you want it. You can press Q to sync it, E to raise it. All the controls are listed below your character on the screen. Um, if you press Alt, it'll unlock it to snap or not snap to. We'll, have to, we'll go over that in a second when, once we uh, get something started. So our foundation's made, now it wants us to make stairs, probably going to have to cut down another tree. Oh, nope, we've got enough. Alright, so you see how that's not snapping to that? If it's red, you can't build it, either you're standing too close to it or there's something in its way. Now if we press Alt, 
it'll let us snap to it, and then you can still adjust it even when it's snapped. And spin it and do all kinds of stuff with it. So we're going to build stairs there. And we're starting our first little safe base, which is going to come in handy really, really soon. All right, now it wants us to make a claw hammer. So we're going to do that while we're cutting this box. Press craft on that. We're going to put that on four for now. And demolish stairs by using the claw hammer. So equip it by pressing four. Get really close to it. Press R as in Romeo, and you'll tear it down. You get all your materials back, I believe. Uh, maybe when you get higher in difficulty, you don't. Unless that's a skill that I had uh, on my higher gameplay. But you get most of your stuff back. And when you build traps, you can demolish those and you'll get their controller back, which is the only part you really care about. All right now it wants us to use a Molotov cocktail to ignite the foundation and repair it. Uh, to repair it, we'll have to use the hammer. Let's go into here, get our cocktail out. We'll put it on eight. And we'll aim in, left mouse button, and throw it. Boom. Now it's on fire. You can see that it's on fire. Wood structures will burn. And not only will this one burn, there's one next to it. It'll catch on fire. Uh, and then it'll eventually destroy. So let's go ahead and repair it. Before. You can see its hit points are at 90% and going down. If you repair it, it's good again. Now if something's on fire, don't stand on it because you'll take fire damage. Now it's good and cool so we can touch it again. But if we touched it while it was on fire, we'll then catch on fire. And like I said, if you had wood around it, that wood will catch on fire. Then your structures burn down. And... Uh, yeah, zombies come into your base and you die. <laughs> so it's pretty simple. All right, so now we need to make an equipment workbench. So we're going to put all that up here. So come up to our little hammer and anvil over here on the left side. The equipment workbench. There's tons of workbenches. Uh, you'll get used to them as we go. Let's go ahead and set this bad boy here. Uh, there's some more stuff to go over with the workbenches as far as they need space around each other. Because some of them can be upgraded. Just like you can upgrade this eventually to stone and metal. Like I said, it's a really intense game, really cool features. It's a little slow at first just because it takes forever to cut trees and logs until you get better equipment. All right, now we need to make a bow at the equipment workbench. So let's come into here. It's a good starting weapon. Select the bow. We crafted it. Let's drop that on five. All right, now it wants us to press tab and make some arrows. That's going to take iron, or piece of iron, and branches. So that's good, and we'll just do two for now. That gives us ten arrows. Now it wants us to make the material production workbench. So press B. Now you can click on it. It'll tell you what it is. If it's got an X on it, that means you don't have the materials to craft it. So look at the bottom and it'll be highlighted if you have the materials. Like for the equipment workbench, we're short on branches. But this one wants us to do the material production workbench, which we need branches for. So to get branches again, uh, the fastest way, bushes and trees. So we'll just cut down some of these really fast. And just grab two to save. Man, it's, it's, I'm so used to doing this in one swing. This is rough. And in case you don't like this view, you can change your view if you don't like being in third person. I prefer this so I can see around me and behind me. But you can change it. If you want to change your view, you just press P as in Papa. So you've got first person. But again, you lose sight around you, but you might be more accurate. You've got, uh, I guess, what's third person over the right side and then zoomed out third person. So there's three different settings for it. Um, like I said, I prefer playing on this one. Uh, sometimes you might want to change. I think driving might be better in first person. I haven't tried it yet because there's some issues with that. We'll do that. get to that once we build a bike. All right, so material production workbench, we need to build that. We should have enough now. So you see it no longer has an X. It's good to go. So you see how it's really, really large. It's got three sides to it, the back, left, and right. So it needs space so you can upgrade it and because it's not going to show up that large. So we'll just set it right here. And as you see, we just get this one tiny bench, but eventually it'll have those two sides to it. All right, now it wants a crafting workbench. So for that, we're going to need planks, lumber, and a piece of iron. So to make that, we're going to need to cut down some trees and stuff. So I'm going to cut down trees and uh, do some really fast gathering. If you need... And here's a journal right here on the road. So make sure you click on that. It'll give you a clue of where to go next. You can press J as in Juliet to see that. Here it'll tell you you've attained information to escape. This is part of the storyline. You can read all this if you want to. To find what it wants you to find, the next journal entry and an important item. Just I'm trying not to give away too much about how the game ends. So just know that when you follow the journal to these coordinates, not only will you find the next journal with the next clue and coordinates to the next spot, You'll also, next to that journal or somewhere nearby it, will find an item you need to keep up with and keep on you at all times. So here it says go to coordinates 44, 31, 166, 39. 
and we'll go over that once we get to the point. Now, if you need pieces of iron, you can break down these barrels, like I said before. I know it takes a minute. Sorry about that. Like I said, it'll get much, much faster. Here we can do find. This also gets faster if you do the right skill sets. So we'll do a take all. Save your fuel. You're going to want as much of that as you can get. Uh, we can't break this yet. We need a wrench. So that, that's coming down the road. But like I said, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to gather up a bunch of stuff so we can kind of knock through this tutorial. Uh, hopefully before hour 24 so we can get a bunch of stuff done. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, a quick note. So while we're gathering, killing pretty much anything you do in the game gives you skill points. We just leveled up. Uh, you see all that at the top of the screen. If you look at the bottom of the screen next to your hotbar, next to number 8, you'll see that symbol. That means that you leveled up. To level up on my game, oh, we got a zombie coming, so we'll try to take it on with our knife for now. Might be a little bit too weak. So, obviously to swing your weapon, you just use the left mouse button. Um, if you want to dodge, you can use alt. Like, we just jump backwards, we jump side. Just make sure you pay attention to the lower left. The top red bar, that is your health. The middle orange bar, that is your stamina. So... As you dodge, you see it uses a ton of stamina. When you swing your weapon, tons of stamina. The white bar below that is your overall energy. To recover that, you need food. Food's very important in the game. If you run, it uses stamina also. So when you're in a fight, make sure you pay attention to that. Some zombies, when you kill them, occasionally they'll drop loot for you. And you just press F as in Foxtrot to pick it up. Like right here, we got cloth, piece of iron, research data, rubber, and plastic. So it's worth killing them. And I just want to cover that really quick. And then to level up on my game is C as in Charlie. And that opens up this screen where you can put points into whatever you want. You can see how much XP to the next level. So for me, if you hover over like attention, memory, judgment, endurance, vitality, strength, it tells you with the bonuses. Strength is damage and jump power. Attention is noise, movement speed. Vitality is attack, stamina usage, dodge stamina usage. Endurance, damage taken is reduced. Stamina regeneration is increased. Judgment, HP recovery from items, and evasion rate. I don't really care about that right now. These do play a role later on when we get into coils. But we're not going to touch coils until late late game. All right, so for memory, that's what I like to use early game. I like to get that to like level 20, level 30. Because it increases your damage to trees, boulders, and ore. And your damage to zombies. So it's going to help you a lot as far as gathering resources. So you use these little arrows to select that you want to increase it, decrease it. You hit decision. You and don't freak out too much if you think you made a mistake here. You can reset this later. There's a way to do that, and we'll go over that. All right, so we're going to hit Decision. That's going to set it in stone. Hit Close. We're out of that menu. We're back to Gathering. And like I said, I'm going to cut down a bunch of trees, bushes, get tons of resources put together. You can clear houses, and, but be careful going into those because they're going to have zombies in them. And also, I, I need to mention that. So space bars to jump, but if you watch your stamina, it uses a ton of it. If you run up to things like this, you can jump over it. If you run fast enough by holding down shift and jump, you can get clear a lot of things. Just make sure you watch your stamina or you might not clear it. Alright, so we've got zombies coming. Let's go ahead and press 5, get our bow out. Left, hold left mouse button, we'll aim. And you always go for the headshots. It, it does a lot more, it stuns them usually. And eventually we'll one shot them with those. So he died. You can see on the ground our arrows fell out of him. So we can press F and pick them up individually. Or we can press T as in tango and we can take them all. Anything close to that, will pick. Uh, it'll pick up anything close to it that you can gather. And then F to pick up a single item. So if you clear houses like this or POIs, I like to pull them out, especially the early game. Later game, I'll just use melee weapons and I'll fight my way in. So like right there, headshot, head exploded. It's all good. Now we got his loot. Now if you think the screen's dark and you can't see very well, you can press L as in Lima. And that'll turn on and off your flashlight which can help a lot <laughs> if you're in a dark space. All right, so like I said, these places, these little places are pretty dangerous. Like you can see there's two of them in here gathered. That one zombie can jump at you. He's pretty dangerous, so watch out. Especially at early game, he can wreck you. All right, so we got another level up. That's good, that's gonna help us in a minute. I don't know why she didn't, oh, we killed her. That's why she didn't come out. <laughs> so we're gonna take all here. And we're gathering resources. This is a good way to gather resources early game too and mid game. Pretty much end game, you're going to do this a lot. So we're looting this POI. So here's a box. We can break it down. Just press F. And see our arrows in the wall. We can pick it up too where we missed. So we're going to take that. Um, we got brick, rope, lumber, wood planks. The stuff we've been needing that we need to go craft. We just got that out of that box. 
Then you'll find cabinets, bookshelves. Uh, you can loot all kinds of things and break down things. So we're going to go and loot this, see what we get. We really need to build a chest because we're going to get full in a minute. So here we've got our first set of armor. We're going to take that. It's going to help us out. Got some leather gloves, bone armor, and leather armor. Right, then we've got iron ingots. Yeah, this is all really good resources. Rope, nails. Uh, you're going to need tons of that. Eventually we can craft it all. So here's another crate. We'll break it down. It'll give us some more vital resources. That might be a lootable bookshelf. It might not be. They vary as POI to POI. Some are, some are not. And check all bookshelves because you can find books on those and those will allow you to learn new skills. Which we'll go over once we find them. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to gather up some stone and some trees. Probably put down a chest. Let me see if we have enough resources so we can do that together really fast. Yeah, we do. And we leveled up again, so let's go ahead and put that into here so we can destroy objects faster. And like I said, uh, we're in a hurry. We're on hour 18, so we can't take too long. Alright, so it wants us to make a crafting workbench, but first let's make a chest so we have a place to put all of our loot. I'm going to set, uh, let's just set it right here. We'll start a stack of them here. So all I did for that is press B, come down to the chest icon, click on the top icon, looks like a little safe. You've got a sleeping bag, a flag, and we just built a chest. We're not going to build any of these just yet because it's part of the tutorial. So from here, uh, the things we're not, we're not going to need gas for a minute or these berries unless you want to eat them. Uh, so we can store some of that. You can see our inventory is currently limited. We can increase that as we play. I really don't feel like we need Molotovs. It's kind of dangerous at our current level. Uh, I suppose we can keep our stone on. So like I said, we'll hit this. It'll sort it. If you go into these other icons, so like this one's weapons and armor, this one's food, and this one's just random items. Or crafting items, I should say. We're not going to need this WD-40 can, which is lubricant. We're not going to need that for a while. Or the crude oil or the resin. So you can store those. They won't be used for a minute. And that'll free up some of your inventory space. Let's see if we can get this crafting workbench down while I'm sitting here gabbing away. Crafting workbench. We still can't build it because we need more planks. So if we come to the material workbench and press F while facing it, we can craft those if we want to. So if you click the small arrow, it does one at a time. If you click the large arrow, it does 10 at a time if you have the materials for it. We'll do two. Let's see if that'll get us going. All right, so we can build our crafting workbench now. So we're going to set him right here. And so the next one is to upgrade the foundation. Hint, equip claw hammer. Like I said, I'm going to gather a bunch of resources really fast, then we'll do that. And you can see it's getting darker. That means they're going to be coming soon. So I'll try to get some lights put up so that we can see. Um, so I'll see you guys in just a minute. I think I have enough resources finally. Um, as you can see, we've leveled up a couple of times. Let's go ahead and put those points. Where, like I said, I'm going to put those into memory. I would like to put a couple in endurance, but we're going to hold off because I want to be able to gather faster. So we'll hit decision there. Um, you can see the resources we've gathered here. And one of the resources I didn't go over that's important that you're going to want a lot of to get started early game and late game. <laughs> it's going to be one of the things you're always after. So this is an iron rock. It's black. And brown, you can see that on here. There's different ores in the game. So the first one we got was a stone. Those are all over the place. You need a lot of stone. Also, especially, or I think it's by day five, you're going to want as much to use as much stone as you can to upgrade all of your wood. You don't want any wood by that day. And as you can see, we're on hour 19, so we're slowly running out of time. When you mine these, luckily this one gave us all the resources. So iron has the chance to give you sulfur, copper ore, iron ore and pieces of iron now copper is rare it doesn't drop every time from those and copper is probably the most needed resource in the game it's used for everything and we'll go over that as we reach each different item that requires it so right now it wants us to upgrade the foundation if you don't know how to do that equip your claw hammer walk up to it if you can't see anything but demolish or whatever just get closer so from here you can see, like i said you can see demolish hit points press t as in tango to do the upgrade and it'll tell you what it costs and this works on everything in the game. Almost, you can almost upgrade anything that you can build. Um, if you can't upgrade it, it means it's maxed out. All right, so here it needs nails, cement, and brick. All right, so that's why I had us build these tables. So if you come to this table, um, at the top are menus where you can change what you're doing. So you can make repair kits. If it's locked, it means you need to find a book and research into it. So here we can only make the wooden shield, a pipe, a bow, repair kit, and brass knuckles. The next one is armor and 
like ammo so eventually we'll get into bigger traps and things so here you can make different types of armor if you have the materials you can make ballista bolts if you have a ballista you can make a trebuchet uh, stone ball if you have a trebuchet and that's the ammo you'll need every time you craft it so ballista bolt it'd be one stick one piece of iron it will make 10 ballista bolts uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now we don't need them uh, you can build if you want to it's cool the next one up here is to upgrade your weapons and armor we'll get to that when we have the items and the final one over here is to recycle it if you don't want it you can use that to delete it and we should also have gone over this so you can see our inventory is kind of full so we're going to equip some of this armor so we've got two chest pieces so let's see we've got leather armor superior it's blue there's different levels there's like gray which is normal with like this axe there's blue and and there's yellow which is legendary so here the things you want to pay attention to and we can go way more in depth later on right now is not the time is the amount of sockets and the coils that are in it so you can see on it it's got ignition coal lightning coal and three sockets on this one and each armor gives different benefits now this one is probably the one we're going to go with to start with Weight is also important. This one weighs less. It increases our damage that we deal and we take less damage. However, it doesn't have a special stat ability. This one's got less sockets, higher level coils, but it's 10% high grade equipment drop rate. So a better chance of getting better equipment. So we're going to wear this one for now. To do it, you can right click it and it should equip it here. To see it, you'd have to take the costume off and then you'll see your character dress out in it. We're going to leave our costume on us now just to do a storage space. The leather gloves. You know, look at your stats on that. Well, like I said, we'll replace all that eventually. Right now, we're just equipping it mostly to get it out of our way. Same thing with the chest. Inventory is always going to be a struggle in the game. So we're going to store things that we don't immediately need. Put our resin in there. We can put the sulfur in there. You don't need sulfur right now. You don't need herbs or any of these foods, really. Uh, keep your protein bars on you, your energy bars. Some people like to save them. I use them. Uh, they're easy to find, usually. All right, so we've got uh, four in-game hours left until the horde comes, so we really got to pick up the pace. So like I said, for this we need cement and bricks, so we'll come to the material workbench for that. Press F to craft. As you see here, we can make wooden planks, branches, lumber, and charcoal. And this is where the tutorial doesn't go very in-depth of what you need to do, so a lot of people get lost here. So you see we can't make bricks or charcoal, so we'll click up here on this little lock. It requires table upgrade. So this table can be upgraded two more times. It'll unlock more features, so here's your cement and your brick and your gunpowder and then here are all your ingots metal and we like I said we'll go to that once we get to it so we need to upgrade the table one time so again claw hammer make sure you've got it equipped get close to your table press T we need three more planks and two more nails all right so planks just take logs so let's go ahead and make those to make nails uh, they should be on this workbench I believe yeah there we go so here we can make nails that just take a piece of iron. We'll go ahead and make uh, five of these. We'll need them. And then we'll press T as an upgrade and then upgrade it. And you can double tap T if you want and it'll also upgrade it. So now we can then craft our brick and cement. So let's see. This uses limestone. That's why I said save your limestone. Brick is going to use branches and regular stone. So you've got small stone stone and limestone so make sure you keep track of that You'll, it'll come in handy later because you have to repair stuff using those items so let's go ahead and build uh, 12 sounds let's do 15. all right so it wants us to upgrade the foundation so we got the hammer equipped already so we press t once press t again and i'll go start building it and again that'll speed up later on too and that wants us to build a research table Sorry, I'm falling way behind just because I'm explaining everything. So at the bottom of this menu, so hammer and anvil at the very bottom, that's our research table. We need two wooden planks. Let's go ahead and build those. And we'll get our research table made. Proceed research at the research table. That means just walk up to it, press F. Those papers we picked up, that's going to allow us to research this. Um, and here we can choose whatever we want. Eventually it's going to require us to have books to advance these. So forest worker is going to allow us to do faster tree destruction. Porter is the one I would advise you take first because it increases your inventory space. So we're going to research that. Then you can use these tabs here to go into a higher level of different items. So let's see what else our quest wants us to do now. It wants us to do a sleeping bag. So we'll press B as in Bravo again to open that menu. Come down to the chest icon, click on sleeping bag. 
It's going to take leaves. Save your leaves. You're going to need them. So we're going to build that. It's going to take leaves, rubber, and cloth. I don't really care about the sleeping bag. We're not going to use it. Don't really have time to rest in the game. Now we'll put it behind that chest. Revival point has been set. So that is what that is the good thing about making that. When we die, you'll revive at it as long as you set it. All right, next, place a flag. Flags are extremely useful if you want to mark something. It's going to be stick, stone, and cloth. I'm going to put that up here next to the sleeping bag. And when you get the crafting item open like this, it slows you down while you're walking. Now if you see on the compass, there's a blue icon there. If you press map, it should show up on your map. So you see a blue, or I don't know why I said blue, white diamond. You can walk up to that, press F, and you can change the icon. So we're going to change this one. We're going to leave this one white just because we're not going to be here. You can change the name of it. You can, like I said, use all these different icons if it's marking something different, like where you parked your jet ski or your car. You can change the color of it. But I'm going to leave this one white because it's not important. We don't plan to be here long. All right, now it wants us to build a pendulum. Uh, before we do that, we're going to rebuild our stairs. And we're going to build some more foundation behind this because the pendulum is quite large. Let's see, foundations. We're going to use the solid foundation. I'll go over the other ones later and, and what situations you possibly want to use them. Like I said, just get creative with how you build. It's your base. It's your way. Hopefully I have enough materials. We're running out of time. I think we're going to go with that for now. Shouldn't need much more. All right, so for the pendulum, we're going to press B on this left side. Go all the way down to what looks like a bear trap. Click on that. That is your trap menu. And then here are all the traps you can be build, and this is what makes this game cool as hell. Or It's like medieval-style traps. It's really wicked stuff. All right, so it wants us to make the pendulum. Don't look at the picture here because that's showing the, a uh, guillotine. We don't want the guillotine right now. We want the pendulum, which is this trap. It's one of the best traps in the game, in my opinion. So we're going to need four pieces of lumber and four planks. Luckily, from the crest quest reward, we already have we already have a trap machine. Later on, we have to build those. And you're going to want a, a lot of traps. <laughs> All right, so like I said, we needed uh, lumber and wooden planks. You press B, make sure we've got enough. We do. And then you're going to place this just like you would anything else. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for a victory tonight when the wave comes. All right, so when you're looking at placing this, this is really important. I wish I knew this when I started playing originally. You see that giant ball up there on the pendulum? Big old spike ball on the left side right now. And it's red because we're standing in it. Uh, you got to get a good position away from it. And it takes three spaces. All right, so we're going to build it this way just for now. I like to build it the other way later. Actually, we're going to leave that front space open. So we're going to come back one extra slot. I want that pendulum to swing so it knocks them off the stairs and away from me. So it's oriented that way. If we had flipped it around, it would swing towards us and it would throw the zombies right at us when it hits them. So it's very important based on how you want to design your traps. Now the reason it's highlighting is it is because we have the hammer equipped so that allows us to upgrade it. Um, it only has a certain limited number of swings. I believe at this level is 30 and you'll have to, then you can add a branch to it and reload it by pressing R. And then back here, I left this a spot to stand. We'll probably increase that. Now it wants us to build a cutter. So if we press B as in Bravo again, we can see the cutter is here. We need two pieces of rope, two lumber, and three planks. Uh, we can go over this also. It's pretty important. So if it's red, you can't build it because something's in the way or it's on a forbidden build place. If it's purple, it means you can build it there, but you don't have the required materials. So we needed rope, which to make rope takes cloth. We needed wooden planks and we needed lumber. I'm going to build a couple of these. Slowly going through our materials really fast. I think uh, let's see, we need rope. It's going to be on this one. So rope takes one cloth. Let's go ahead and build like five. He said you can never have too much. Should give us enough for the cutter. And then I'm going to fix the light situation here too so that you can see. I know the screen's really dark. So you can place the cutter here and the, the way you want to set your traps up and build your foundations and your base. Some people like to build on the ground. I like to build mine elevated. That way the zombies will always path towards you. So you want them to have to walk through it. So we're going to put this here and they will literally walk through this to get up the stairs and right into right this and then we'll be at the back with a bow. Alright, so now it wants us to turn the light on, which we already did. So 
That's how far behind we are because I'm trying to talk and explain. <laughs> All right, then it wants us to press Alt to dodge. We've done that. It wants us to build a cooking table. Now, before that, I want to build some lights. A lot of people think there's no lighting in the game. Um, early game, there is lighting. So come to the chest icon and below the safe icon is a light. And here you can build really cheap lighting if you have any fuel. So we have what we need. We're, we just need to grab that fuel that we stored that we got from the car. And then we can put some lights up. And the only reason I want to build lighting is so that y'all can see when the wave comes in. Personally, I'd advise saving that if you don't mind the dark. All right, so let's go ahead and build this here. Bam. And you'll see it gives off really good lighting. And obviously for streaming purposes, it's really important to have good lighting. And we'll build a different one just so you can see that one. So we've got the wall lamp. You, can, If it's red, just use your mouse pull and rotate it, and eventually it'll get a, on a good spot so that you can actually set it up. So let's put one of the stairs for now. Give us some light right here in the front. Uh, let's see, we can attach it here, but we're out of materials. What am I missing? More lumber. And it's really important to be able to see if, in case you're not good at seeing at night. Let's grab another piece of lumber. Really need to build another foundation too on the back so we have space. <laughs> All right, so. Wait, I still can't build you with it. Oh, I need leaves. No, I guess we can cut down a tree really fast or really slow compared to what I'm used to. But like I said, the game is a race against the clock. So if you feel like it's too fast, increase your days. If you feel like it's too slow, you know, just adjust it to what fits your playstyle. And as you get better and better, you'll want to increase your difficulty levels, make the zombies stronger, make more of them spawn. Wait, that thing didn't give me enough. Oh, it's 50 leaves to build it. That's why. So let's see. I guess we'll just cut down some trees because I want some foundation blocks. So we're running out of time and I need to build some arrows. But you want to save your leaves, you can eventually use those to make more research data if you're lacking. Yep, yeah, plus three leaves off that. <laughs> so it definitely takes time to gather. Our stamina is really low. You can see our bar, our white bar is moving, which gives us less hit points and less stamina. To fill that back up, we're going to have to eat food. I'm just holding off so we don't waste our protein bars. All right, so we might not have time to get another light up, uh, but you can, everyone can, should be able to see pretty well. Uh, actually, we're one tree away from getting a lamp. We're gonna swap to our knife so we can run a little bit faster. Like I said, we're running really low on time. So we cut that tree down. We should be looking pretty good. We need branches because you need to be able to reload your traps. Never fight a horde knight without having your branches or whatever you need to reload your traps because they will eventually need to be reloaded while you're actively fighting till you get to the cooler part towards the end game which we'll go over that like i said when we get there i don't want to spoil everything for you we're just going to ease into it as if it's a normal playthrough and that way if anybody needs help you know i'm not ruining it for you you get to enjoy the game while at the same time you won't be lost You not let me. Okay, you're back. So that's. What, oh no, I guess. Oh, there we go. Slap it right there, so you can see the crafting benches. See how much better that is. We can turn the light off. Really good lighting system in the game. I like it a lot. It's kind of dark. Kind of looks a little blurry in YouTube, um, but it's not that bad. All right, so it's a, it wants us to build a cooking table. Let's see, we'll build some arrows in a minute. We've got a little bit of time. Not much. So hammer and anvil, go to the pot icon, and that's our cooking table. Again, <laughs> of course, we need more leaves. Why not? Always need leaves. I have an early game like this for the first, I don't know, I'd say 20 days or so. You might feel like it's a struggle to uh, keep up with everything. Like you'll be running back to your base. Oh no, I gotta repair and grab sticks really fast. I have nothing left. But I promise you, it gets more and more fun the later the waves get. And everything speeds up, you get your gathering faster, your resources much faster. Okay, that should have us doing pretty good. And this base right here should be plenty to keep us safe. 
And I can show you like a little way to build like a safety feature in case something bad happens. Like you fall off or they get to you. So a cooking table, we're going to build that here. Cooking table is good. You can build some food. You're, you'll need a cooking table later on and we'll go that when we get to it. Okay, so now we just got five bird eggs for our reward. It wants us to make a boiled egg at the cooking table. So we're going to press F to craft that. Click on it if it's highlighted. All right, so if you're looking at a recipe for something you need that's blacked out because you don't have what you need yet because it's in your chest or you need to gather it, and you come back and it's not in the same spot, that's going to be at the top because you're going to have the items on you. So anything that you can craft automatically gets moved to the top. All right, so we're going to craft all five of these. That way we have some food. It wants us to build a small animal trap. Now, if you look at the lower left, you can see that our stats are low. So you can right-click this in your inventory to eat it, or you can drop it on your hotbar. Now the egg, if you hover over it, it tells you it gives you 10 hit points. Again, hit points is the top red bar and 10 energy, which is the bottom white bar. And then your stamina will go up to the maximum energy amount that you are that you have allotted. So like I said, we'll press 6 to eat that egg, and you see that our stats are going back up. You definitely want your stats full whenever a wave starts. So let's see, small animal trap, those are important. You're going to want a lot of those once you get your, your main base built. Again, that's going to be on a trap menu, and then under the sub menu, go down to the very bottom to the mouse trap. And for that, we'll need more leaves, branches, stones, and seeds. And again, seeds you can get from bushes and trees. So like I said, always, always needing leaves, vines, and branches, especially early game. Later in the game, probably not so much, unless you're really, really building something massive. So we cut that down. Let's grab these bushes. They're pretty leafy, and they should give us some good branches. All right, we leveled up again. That's nice. Go ahead and put our point into our memory, hit decision. All right, so if auto save was on, it'd be saving right now. A lot of times I like to save before the wave gets here, but this is just the first wave, so I'm not worried about it. But don't don't ever doubt the waves. Like they, they skyrocket in strength, depending on what setting you're playing on. All right, so again, small trap. Let's go ahead and build that. We'll just set it here. You can set this wherever you want to. Um, if you, It's like the Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. So once it's standing like that, you don't have to do anything else. Just leave it there and just wait. Eventually something will show up and end up in it. Fox, bird, or not bird, fox, rabbit, um, just small animals. Okay, let's see. Now make trap machine at the crafting workbench. All right, so the trap machine is kind of expensive, especially at this point in the game. Um, if you look in here, it's currently locked. We need to be an engineer to do that. So we'll need research papers. So if we go to the research tab table, and to go to skill, we need to come up here to engineer. So we need to be an engineer graduate first. That's going to cost us 10 papers. Go ahead and do that. Personally, me, I like to go all the way to wrench. Because with the wrench, we can start getting resources faster. Um, and then we'll hit research here. It's 20 more papers. Senior engineer is going to take a book. So we're going to have to find that. Um, important note on that, just to go over early game for anybody who's getting ahead of me. If you need to know where a book is for a certain item or research you're looking for just hover over the book and it gives your description and the coordinates so like right here it says use to do research research senior engineer obtain at the research facility coordinates 44.34166.36 so it, that works on all the books and all of these now some books don't give coordinates and that's because you have to find them throughout the map and you'll see that as we proceed all right so with the wave almost here you can see the circles maxing out the skulls getting more and more angry we're at hour 23. I want to try to get a couple of foundations up. So you can see it's snapping too. Um, if it doesn't go where you want it, just use the keys and it should go. Let me see. So we've got that much. Feeling we'll do one more. All right. So if you're scared that they're going to get through your stuff or you're not going to be able to hold them off, a good thing to do because they will follow a path. All right, I like to keep everything lined up. So we're going to build that there. That one there. And eventually this won't work, but you can apply it. Because eventually they learn to do more advanced things. So <laughs> you'll see as we go. So just destroy this foundation. Leave a gap right here. So that way if you fall off, you can run around over here. You can jump up and grab it using spacebar. If you want to, you can also build a stairs. If you're scared, you're not going to make the jump because sometimes you'll miss. And you can see the notification at the top, the wave has started. And we're going to end the episode at the end of this wave, and then we'll pick it back up on day two, or day one now. <laughs> so we start on day zero, now we're on day one.
So they're coming. So if I stand here, they'll come here. And they should walk through all these. I really wanted to get uh, a better weapon. And I guess we can work with a pipe. <laughs> I really don't like that. I like using the spear, personally. Uh, you can fight him with the axe and everything else. You can fight him with the knife. It's not that great. We're going to build a couple of arrows to make sure we're good, though. We got 27 arrows. They stack up to 30 right now. You can sort that. You get, like I said, you can make a javelin and a throwing knife. I've used one handed weapons. You can equip the torch. So I believe we have a few seconds before they get here. Maybe we can build another trap. So we need a trap machine, which I think requires. Yeah, we actually we can't build this right now because we need copper wire. Copper wire is made from copper ingots, and we only have one piece of copper. So we're just going to have to hold our own. Now, there is another way to survive. I can show you all that. So here they come. Don't stand near the traps because your own traps will hit you. Same with this thing. And then you can see the pendulum working, so it's going to knock him back. I should have put the cutter on the top of the ramp right there. And we won't get experience for the traps killing them, so if you want, you can shoot them like that and you saw on the backstroke that it sent them flying right at us now the bigger the zombie the more hit points it has so pay attention to that make sure you pick up your arrows collect the research data uh, you can wait till the end of the wave the bags will still be there now as you can see that thing's been working so it says reload so it's 22 out of 30 uses right now at 100 percent hit points now if i press r and add a branch to it it goes right back up to 30. Oop. And we got, we got company. So see, we're getting hit. We're going to attack. Jump over here. Uh, because we built stairs, they're going to path back through the traps and around to get to us. And then we can just jump right back. Land a couple of headshots if they're getting too close. But watch out for his charge. And he fell off. Now, we do eventually, like I said, we want to build walls and things because these zombies get harder and harder. There are different types. I believe I just saw one spit at us a second ago. I'm sure he'll show up in a minute. Yeah, you see that green guy? He can spit goo at us. It'll poison. I think it'll poison us. Or it might just damage us. The trap's working pretty well. Uh, normally, uh, with the way I build my bases, by hour two, hour three everything's dead and the the waves are finished so if we can't grab us a snipe right here and of course I missed it's been a while since I used the bow yep, so he just spit at us took damage and it slows us also and we're taking damage over time we're gonna jump back we're gonna eat an egg to get some hit points back the traps do the work we could save our arrows because we do we are kind of low really don't want to have to fight these guys using my knife <laughs> Mate, we can but we're so weak it's gonna take a lot of damage or a lot of hits to kill them luckily she got hit by the pendulum so we'll run up here really quick while there's a small break we'll check it it's at one out of 30 definitely want to reload that don't worry about that cutter in the front you can hear it's working it has, uh, I believe, 100 or 200 spins on it. Uh, he's pretty big, so he's got some good hit points. We'll jump over here. Make them run back through the traps. And right back here. And like I said, if you were working fast, you weren't talking and queuing like I am, uh, you'd probably be able to get at least another trap or two up. As long as you know what you're doing. <laughs> and we could have built one trap and set up in that house there or another house. And there's a good way to trick them. And you can survive like the first three or four nights that way really easy. So check that, 21 out of 30. Don't get too close, it will hit you and it will hurt. And just keep letting it work, turning them to pink mist. We can come up here and we can do a take all to get some of our arrows back really fast, but make sure you dodge that. Make sure you dodge the forward and back swing now. Don't just run up once it's done one time. So if we look at the cutter, it will cut us if we get too close. It's at 75 out of 100. If you want to, you can also just walk circles around this, as long as there's not too many. <laughs> like you just saw. Uh, they are zombies. They're not that smart. Which I like. It's, it's, it's the realism of the game as far as like a zombie apocalypse would go. Seems uh, pretty legit to me. 
So we're now still on day one, hour one. Nope. Get off me, Karen. All right, yep, you go back that way. Yep, and they're still coming. And we're sitting at 11 out of 30. I'm gonna reload just to be safe in case I get distracted while talking. And like I said, this like the first couple of days is a good time to shoot them and kill them if you can. Headshots, as you can see, you can do stun damage. But that'll grant us some experience. Later on, it's probably not worth it. I hear somebody coming. We're going to get hit by that in a second. <laughs> but if you're doing like I'm doing right now, where you're running up and looting, just be really, really careful because I, I promise you that thing will really hurt. I thought the way would be almost be done, but like I said, we're all normal, so there's quite a few Hit points are high. If you're on peaceful, you can probably one shot them, and there's gonna be uh, there probably will be like ten zombies or something simple. Probably be conserving mammo, but we're getting close to the end of the night. Should be fine. Occasionally, you will lose arrows in the graphics, or they'll explode, or they break. You know how it goes. Another one bites the dust. I really gotta work on my bow and arrow skills. And just remember, this is just night one. Just imagine what uh, like night 100, night 50 is like, night 30. Because like I said, every time, every every day they get more and more. It increases. And they get stronger, they get faster, meaner. They gain special abilities. I'm not going to go over all those until we get there. Because like again, I don't want to spoil it for you. I want you to be able to discover on your own. All the fun you can have. <laughs> Come on guys, are we done yet? Okay, we've got 16 arrows. Okay, we're doing good. Of course you're coming. You almost baited me into my own trap. Okay, another level up. Let's go ahead and do that so we can do more damage. Like I said, the main reason I do that is not for the zombies. It's so that we can harvest trees and rocks faster. Oops. My bad. There you go. There's your reward for getting this far. Giving out prizes all day. Let's get some of this back. You'll hear the music change. You'll see the skull change. That usually means the end of the wave. But still be a little cautious. Because at the end of the wave, there might be some stragglers that got stuck on a rock, tree, building, bush. And then you run around and pick up all your, your loot, your collectibles. Reload your traps. Repair your items using your, uh, your traps and your stairs using your claw hammer. Now, if these stairs were to break, they'd have no way to reach us up there. So what they're going to do is start beating on everything. And they'll destroy your entire base trying to get to you if they don't have a straight path. Oh yeah, good note too, if you have your bow drawn and you don't want to fire the arrow, just right click and it'll put it away. Because I guess we're not quite, oh this must be the final, so at hour, oh yeah we're still on that hour one. So hour two is when you get to the final wave, let's do some dodging here so we get out of the way. And the final wave will send stronger zombies, like these guys are a little bit stronger. So I'm not going to fight them head on just yet. You see that mutant guy? He can hit pretty hard at this point. currently with our current setup. See how they're getting agitated and just wrecking our stuff. But yeah, so this should be the final wave. You can see there's a larger number. It's the stronger ones. Like the big guy's going to probably make it to us. Get out of here, girl. 
Uh, sometimes they'll get stuck and they'll just be hitting on something even though they can reach you. I uh, just shoot them one time and they'll start pathing back to you. All right, so there's the music. Music finally went away. We should be in the clear. Tip that. See like how they're stuck right there? I see we shot him, now he's moving again. So do that, because sometimes they'll just sit there and just beat your traps and, and your walls until they all explode and die. So there's our loot. That is our first wave night. And uh, yeah, this is one of the worst traps in my opinion. I hate these. Like they look cool, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I love the pendulums. They're amazing. Uh, my favorite one is probably, I'm trying to think of what it's called. I only built like a hundred of them. Uh, Shredder. Shredder is probably one of the best traps, especially early game. Tons of damage on tons of enemies. But guys, that's going to be night one. Like I said, make sure you eat your food, get your stats back up. You don't sleep at night. You don't sleep during the day. You keep moving. You can sit in chairs and beds and you'll gain some hit points back if you want to save your food. So for that, we should be able to come over here, press R to rest. And you can see we'll slowly regenerate our hit points. Just if you want to save time, or not time, but food. And then you right click and cancel that to stand back up. And we can check what we got loot wise. We've got gunpowder, lubricant, iron, research, uh, cloth. That's mostly all they drop. And from there, like I said, keep following your quest line. Or what we're going to do now that's a new day is we're going to go to our journal, find our coordinates, find them on the map. And there should be like right over here somewhere. I'm trying to think. Yeah, somewhere like right over here. And we're going to get the next journal book entry and uh, hopefully find some more advanced research. Um, with all the data we just got, if you want to, come here also. See what else you can learn. Order will be good, but we don't have the book for it. Scavenger speeds up our completion speed. So we can. that's good to have. Uh, forest worker, uh, again, good to have. Faster mining, faster tree cutting. So we're going to grab some of that. As you can see, they're all requiring books as we go. And I believe that should be enough to really get you started in the game, give you a good understanding. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'll either cover it in the next video or the upcoming videos, or I'll reply to the comment directly myself. Uh, thank you for watching, guys, and I uh, hope to see you on the next one. <music>